The silence that breaks our communities. The world suffers a great deal from the abundance of words. Some people just speak and others break. Yes, words that pierce like swords or fall like stones from the sky. And sometimes words that simply make no sense. No doubt, silence is noble and there are great lessons to be learned in silence. In the Peak Avod compilation of ethical teachings, we learn that we should be careful with speech and that we should say little and do much. We do not say something that cannot be understood, thinking it will be understood later. So we mostly stay quiet to gain understanding. Peak Avod equally says the ultimate truth is wordless, the silence within the silence. Yet silence, as well as speaking, should be kept in context. It's not only noble to be quiet, it's equally a noble thing to say the right words at the right time. The missing words in particular contexts can equally break our communities. Dear humans, we all know there is time to speak and time to stay quiet. Yet we mostly have problems differentiating when to speak and when to stay quiet. When we stay quiet when we should be speaking, we kill our communities. It is said that wise people have been silenced just to avoid annoying the idiots in our societies. Is that really the case? We should be bold and intentional to promote growth in our communities. And that is just the wisdom, I guess. It's not just about our singular needs. It's about helping the human race to grow. We have to speak out calmly, but loud enough to be heard and understood. There is time to call out and speak some truth about the dead situations in our communities. Silence cannot heal them. Parents assault children. Family members feel entitled to exploit hardworking relatives and ruin them. A healthy parent abandons a spouse with sick children. Parents cannot allow adult children to make decisions for themselves. Adult children neglect aging parents. There are unnecessary fights about landed properties partners for life. Married couples cheat each other. A greedy relative seeks the property of a deceased family member. Authoritarian narcissistic people mentally challenge family members with fear and control manipulative actions. Good friends sit and gossip about good friends. And the list goes on. The key principle in knowing when to open our mouths is by examining ourselves. What motives and intentions do we have? When we talk, are we seeking some selfish empowerment? Are we just talking for selfish gains? When we stay quiet, are we just complying with an evil agenda? How then do we keep on dining in silence with bullies? How can we fellowship with cheaters and people who assault each other? How do we silently support people who undermine and reject others who are just trying to grow? How can we give a blind eye to husbands and wives who cheat each other? How can we drink together with people who beat their partners? How can we? Do we realize that some people are bent on controlling others? Do we know that people seek to influence others by all means with unsolicited advice and values? We are all works in progress and must speak out rightly. Silence allows violence. Silence is compliance. The danger of staying quiet for the most part is that evil and shadow situations breathe deep in our societies 
it might be difficult to change when it crosses generations. We must be authentic in our motives. Our singular well-being is prime, yet we seek our collective well-being as humans. We should be sincere enough to tell the people around us when things are not going right or if they are not doing well. We should practice speaking the truth calmly and quietly, asking questions to understand the situation at hand before adopting the silence. When we stay quiet, when we should at least show a sign of acknowledgement, we are practicing violence. Even the oppressors sometimes do oppress in silence. We must be intentional. The growth process continues and it's all about love.